everybody. Welcome to Erica's Making Geodes today. And I hope you've had an awesome day. It is I'm Tuesday because we're live at two o'clock. And I'm Erica. Oh, with me as always are the fur babies, Bowie and Canvas. And today um, I'm gonna be making a ruby or crimson colored geode or geoid, depending on if you um, heard a friend of yours, like a friend of mine say it wrong for so long that I have no actual idea sometimes as I'm speaking what a geode or a geoid is. What's up, at Mac? How are you today? I am mixing this with my um, Istoyo mixer. You can find those in my description box below this video. Just click on the Amazon link. Um, they're pretty handy because I don't like having to mix resin. <laughs> it hurts my arm after a while and this just works so well. I used to get really jealous um, of the like countertop people that mix such high quantities of resin and they just use their um, their drills to mix their resin and their like paint stirrer attachment. But when you try to do that with a smaller amount, it actually mixes in a lot of bubbles because if your mixer comes up out of the resin like this, then you're just basically folding in bubbles. And every time I try to do that with my like drill mixer, it just made it a frothy, cloudy mix of resin. And it started way too vigorously. I don't know if you guys can see in there. The swirls where the resin isn't quite mixed all the way. Right over here. You'll hear me refer to it as, oh, you can really see it on the, hold on, let me scrape the edges. Yeah, see that swirl that's coming in right there? Sometimes I call it fairy floss. Sometimes I say it looks like, uh, like fishing lure, wire, rope, string, twine. I can't remember what it's called actually. But um, that's what I'm referring to. I'm gonna let this dribble off. What's up, Tim? Hello, Kathleen, you love the mixer? I do too. I wish it was something I came up with, but I didn't. And you can find it on Amazon in my Amazon link down in the description box. It really, really helps the channel when you guys use my links and purchase from my shop. It just, oh, that's not going to fit. I'm going to set that right there and let it spin the rest of that epoxy off. Well, that didn't work. All right, I'll just hold it. Um... Forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, it really helps. And so I appreciate it every time you guys use any of my links or purchase from my shop, especially in these trying economic times we're going through right now, you know? Um, the colors I'm using today are Angel White from Larez. Resin Art Red Plum, 
Shooting Star or Milky Way from Resin Art. Carmine from Just Resin. Color Passion Black. And maybe the Raspberry Dye or Tint from um, Color Passion. Even if you use a stand mixer or an auto mixer like I was just showing you guys, it's still good practice to scrape your edges and the bottom of your cup with some other kind of stirring tool because if you don't, the odds of you getting a weak spot or um, an area of your piece that doesn't quite cure all the way a lot greater. All right. So I'm going to start since I'm doing such a large size piece. I'm going to start by separating out my colors. It's also good practice to get your resin out of your big bucket as quickly as possible because when it's together like this, resin heats up on its own. That's part of its curing process and it kind of like plays off of itself when it's in a large quantity like this and it'll get hotter than it would if it was in a smaller cup or bucket so always good practice to get your resin out of the big cup as soon as you can so let me think for a second so we want to do a translucent white milky way crimson, and opaque white, ooh, uh, silver gray, and I'll save some out for miscellaneous Uh, color that I may need. I usually leave a little bit um, in my cup to use later, but I need to mix a little bit more resin up to do our something. What's it called? Oh yeah, the druzy part. I'm going to be using the Sorry, mid thought. It's like a glitch. I'm going to be using uh, fire glass and glitter glass, as well as the Epsom salt mixture for this piece. So I'm just going to put this back into my mixer over here so you guys don't have to just sit and watch me mix resin because that's not exactly tons and tons of fun now is it just get this sucker moving cool 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 all right so that's going and i can concentrate on over here so I'm going to do majority like whites, light colors. So let me grab my this. Actually, it looks like I'm going to be using pearl shimmer instead of Um, angel white just because it's handy. Whenever I do geodes, I go into it with an idea of what I want to do, but it largely changes as I go just because um, as resin does just what resin does and moves and lays out and 
you know, is resin. Um, sometimes I just, I have to pivot. And I think it's a good practice to have an idea, but not be completely 100% into the idea and give yourself some essentially just wiggle room because you never know what your resin is going to just decide it wants to do. So that first color was um, Color Passion Pearl Shimmer. This one is Milky Way or Shooting Star by Resin Art. I am currently out of this one, but I expect more in soon. You can also use um, Resin Art Abalone Shell for a very similar look. What's up, Sandy, everyone? You can't find what in the link. Let me make sure of what you're looking for before I tell you how to get to anything. I was going to do a quite bigger bit of my carmine, but I may do a little bit less. Typically when I do geodes or, um, it's kind of like mar when I do marble paintings, I, I want just a hint of the color. Because to me, I, I don't know. Who knows what I'm thinking right now. But this is Carmine. It's beautiful. Not straight up red. It's a little bit of a darker or deeper red. I had that paste out. And so there may be a chunk or two in here that I have to deal with. But this is essentially for a friend of mine that is, um, she has a, an Airbnb at the University of Alabama. And she may need some artwork for her wall. And I know she's into crimson. There's a little team there. And so I'm essentially making a piece of art to force her to buy it <laughs> because I know she likes these kind of colors. Um, this color is called Red Queen. Nope, Red Plum. But I'm thinking it may be too plummy for this piece. So maybe I need to add... Um, maybe I'll add a little bit of my carmine in here to make it like a deeper version of a red, but that isn't reading as kind of purple. Also, tonight I will be doing the live on RK3 Designs page, if you are so inclined to come over there. I'll be doing kind of a play on Panda Marble, but it will be... You know, it's got a shimmer to it. Uh, it'll be a play on Panda Marble, but it'll be brown with a new floating gold for them. If you're on my channel a lot, you've already seen the floating gold that I'm going to be using tonight. But I haven't showcased it to them. Okay, I'm also going to mix up Silver Gray from Just Resin. If you guys are asking me questions... I'll be right there. I just got to get these pigments mixed up. Silver gray is great because it's like almost a bluish soft gray. It's not abrasive. Very subtle gray. The University of Alabama is crimson, white, and gray. I might need some more of this actually because it's a great gray. It's very subtle. 
and keep the paste around in case I have to mix up another little bit. Our other resin is mixing nicely on its own. The, another great thing about this mixer is you can set this button, see when it's flashing like that? That means it's gonna mix for three minutes, going one way for a minute and then it'll reverse it for a minute and then it'll go back the other way. It's great, okay. I feel like I need a darker color. And I just will happen to have that black onyx over here that may or may not be stuck to my table. If you guys have never seen my art studio, I'm very much a messy artist. An onyx, very deep black color. In my head, I'm going to need this, but factually, we'll see. Super black. All right, so let's first begin by putting our glass out. So I'm going to use my one inch shard glass. This is fire glass. You can get it at like hardware stores. You can get it from my shop. If you don't want to buy 10 pounds, you just want a pound. I'm just going to put it in areas where I need kind of a lift. I'm going to put some here. I don't want to just, okay, it's not ATD after dark, but I don't want to rim it all the way around. I just want parts to be kind of lifted. So I'm going to do some of that, some of this. Maybe bring some up, but I don't know, we'll see. keep this handy. Right, we also need to mix up our Epsom salt um, druzy mixture. If you guys have never seen me do this, it's pretty amazing in that it's just, it looks really accurate and beautiful and it's a little bit sciencey, even though I don't do the sciences. It's awesome. So let me get my other resin. Trying to knock off any residual resin. Let's put it in a cup. I don't splatter resin everywhere. Perfect. All right. Some of this resin that I just mixed, I'm going to keep for in case I need it for something. And the rest I'm going to use for my little Epsom salt druzies. If uh, you are interested in what kind of resin I'm using, it is Stone Coat Art Coat. You can find a link down in the description below this video. And use the code YALL, Y-A-L-L, -L, all caps, no punctuation. And get, I, I, don't, I still can't remember if it's 13 or 15% off, but it's a good percent to get a discount no matter how much you order. There's no minimum to use it. And it really, 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 really helps my shop if you guys use my codes. All right. Let's pour some of this in here. This is gonna act as like the binder for my Epsom salt drink. Oh, it comes with a little scooper. Boop. I'm gonna need more than that. Thank you, Clara. 
Resin Reflections, you're new to the resin world. Well, welcome to my channel. JJ, I got resin mix. I don't have time to go mess with shoes. I know I'm going to need more of that, but we're just going to start here. I'm also going to mix in some glitter. This is just some clear large flake craft glitter. It's just to give everything a little bit more of a sparkle, a little bit of pizzazz And I'm also going to mix in some just white, kind of like rock granules. I think this is from Torganol. I don't know if you guys remember when we did a lot of reviews for Torganol products. And I want this to be a very thick slurry. I want it to keep its peak. So see how it looks right now where it's not super liquidy. It's like chunky. It's not all the way incorporated yet, so I can't just use it at, at its present state, but that's what I'm looking for in totality after I get it all incorporated. It doesn't take long to mix up. And I know that a lot of the questions regarding this method is how, how well does it hold up over time? And I've had plenty of people come to me and say that it's just fine. So it's still a little bit gooey, a little bit soft. Um, if I were to drop it, it'll kind of like melt down into itself, kind of like that kinetic sand type stuff. So therefore I know I don't have as much stuff in here as I need. So I'm just gonna put some more Epsom salts. And I'm not the originator of this technique, but I don't know who the original, the OG is that did this. So if you know, feel free to leave me a note in the comments. That way I can look it up and give proper kudos to the originator of this process. So when you add more in, I just, I usually just kind of stab it down to the, the bottom, if you will. So now it's better. It's keeping its little peaks a little better. But it's still not exactly where I want it. So I'm going to do one more scoop and then we're going to start applying this to the board. Do you guys love this? Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. Do you guys mind when it's a little bit more in depth or would you prefer multi step pieces like this to be like time lapsed? I keep getting mixed answers about time lapse videos, so I'm very interested to know what you guys have to say. Also, I'm going to be having a, a fall art sale this Friday at 6 p.m. to sell a lot of my precious artworks because bills got to be paid. And so I'll just make more art. And I would love it if you guys would come in and join me for that. It's at 6 p.m. Central. Okay, so now that I have my this... I'm going to try not to get crazy. I'm going to just put it out in my little gullies, my little crevices. And I'm just going to let it lay however it's going to want to lay. Because in my opinion, um, I feel like it looks more natural when I just let this stuff do what it kind of just wants to do instead of forcing it into forms. I also think it looks more realistic if you have high points and low points. So I may make this bit over here a little bit higher. Let's cover that middle. You can find all the colors I'm using today at artisttilldeath.com, by the way. 
Um, I don't have this particular type of board on my website anymore. It was, it's just too heavy to mail, to ship, but I can get them cut this way if anyone is interested in this style specifically. Just leaning it up these walls a little bit. Not trying to get too crazy with it because then I have to clean up all of the druzy that kind of went rogue. I'm also allowing the fire glass to peek through because I think it looks really neat when it does that. Anytime you can add like peaks, valleys, depth, dimension, I think you end up with a more well-rounded piece. I almost couldn't even say that out loud. Well-rounded, here we go. I'm also coming up over the back lip on this. I'm gonna come over the lip on other areas as well. When you have filler like this, it just saves you from having to just completely fill with resin. And let's be honest, resin is probably the most expensive part about doing resin art. Resin is not cheap. So that's why I always get so excited when I can give you guys sales and things. Let's bring it over the edge on this side too. I think I wanna go dark to light on this one, but what do you guys think? All right, I think we're good for now. I do have some left over in here. Unfortunately, you cannot store it for later. You have to kind of use it before your resin cures, but after I get everything down, I may want to add some more resin to a different area. So, I mean, not resin, the druzy to a different area. So I'm going to just set it aside for now. Love Shack, thank you so much for saying that. I really like doing longer videos, but those are the ones that I get comments like, hey, there's too much chatter or whatever. Because I do talk a lot. I like to greet you guys. I like to know that you're important to me and that I appreciate that you're here. There's some people that just... There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, some people just don't want to listen to it. But I enjoy greeting all of you guys when I see you. All right. Now that I have all of this cleaned up, we can start adding the resin, and that will be the fun bit. I just don't want anything interfering with the flow of the piece. You know what I mean? Jelly beans. Okay. Hello, Heather. What colors did I decide? Looks like I have gone with black, light red, dark red, white, gray, and Milky Way. So I think I'm going to go outside in on depth, like color depth, tone. So essentially start with the dark and move inward. But is that the same feeling that you all get with this piece? Let me know. I'm gonna adjust you guys down just slightly. Now you guys seen me work a lot with the amazing Quick Coat from Alumalite, and um, so I'm used to working with that. No, Bowie, that's okay. So I'm used to working with that, 
And so I feel like I have to go faster, faster, faster. But with this, I have a two hour working time. It's banana, it's ultra UV resistant as well. Krish, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, I truly do. I appreciate every time you guys tell me that you like what you see or that I've inspired you. Not that I'm, you guys don't have to tell me those things, but it just feels good, you know? All right, so I'm going to start in the middle with our Milky Way. And yeah, some of it's going to roll into our Druzy area, and that's fine. That's just going to further bond our mix to the board. Then I'm going to go in, I think, with the... Uh, I'm already, like, deviating from my plan. Okay, I'm going to go in with the Carmine. And I think actually I'm going to try to just ride this rim, the rail here. This is very much the shining right now. Anyone else get that vibe? I know it looks kind of crazy right now, but give me a minute. It's going to look brilliant. Just got to edge up this area. Edge up this area. All right. Now let's smooth all this out. Trust me, it doesn't look like much right now, but it will. Trust the process. So I'm just going to fill this. I was going to fill it all in with my finger, but I'm picking up some of my jersey. So I'm going to just pour in front of it. All right. Whew. I feel like that was one of the harder parts. Sometimes for me, just getting started on a project is the hard part. So just putting resin down a lot of times saves me from just not starting something. All right, so next I'm going to do this darker red the red plum from resin art with a little bit of carmine mixed into it so it's not quite so purpley and i'm not pouring the resin right up to the edge i'm giving it some room so i can just fill it in and that will just help with my line's not running so much. It'll help it to kind of stick to itself a little bit more in theory. It's still going to run, but it won't run quite so much. A lot of times with my work, I will add the color and then go about um, doing the design work after. So I'm going to do black. I think I'm going to do quite a large row of black. And I'm going to fill it in just like I did on the last one. I'm just going to push it up to the edge of our druzy area so that I don't pick up the, the mixture and kind of make it travel. Just 
catching a wave of product and pushing it in to the other areas. Since resin self levels, you have to worry about creating any dips, valleys, or low points. It it'll smooth back out as long as you are working with it, you know, while it's still fluid. Okay. Now I'm going to do some white up here. Oh my goodness. I'm going to try to keep it from running down into the piece. No promises. It probably will run down because there's so many steps. Like it's, it's a difficult um, surface to pour on because of all the levels. So I'm trying to push just up to the edge, but not break the surface tension, which I just did right there. So we may have to do some hand painting after this piece is cured, but that's fine. Working with reds and avoiding pink is one of the more difficult parts of working with resin if you like to work with, you know, pinks. And so the way around it is to keep some separation. So I have black in between my white and my red. You know what? At first I didn't, I wasn't into this, but now I feel like I like it. There's a dip look. Let me, let me bring you down here to see what I'm talking about. This looks very like pop art and I'm kind of here for it, but I want to know what you guys think. Should I do more of that or try to take it away? I think I'm going to do some darker red up here. I'm using the darker red instead of the lighter red. Well, for now, if I can make it all the way around. I'm using the darker one to hopefully further prevent any pink from happening. But it looks like we're gonna have to put some of the other red up here anyways. But that's okay. You can also help your reds from turning pink by just not manipulating them when they're next to white. So I'm pushing the red up into the white, but I'm not swiping over the white. I'm not trying to make the red and the white do literally anything except for be next to each other. Now I just need to spread the red out a little bit. Looks like I can just cover the whole rest of it in red actually, because it's gonna self level. When you put resin out, it's gonna pour out at, depending on what kind of resin you're using, uh, a fourth inch, but it's gonna wanna self level down to an eighth inch. So you really have to watch yourself and not um, just pour thick rows of resin without giving it room and the ability to self-level and relax to an eighth inch. So that's why I kind of put color down and then manipulate it with my hands. I'm gonna do black up here. And we will smooth that out as well real quick. 
I'm debating on if I want to swipe this one. I feel like I shouldn't because I don't want to risk the pink, but I want to know what you guys think. Swipe or no swipe? As soon as I get all this area covered, I will check and see what y'all said. Whew. So this area of white that's in the middle, nope, on this rim here, it didn't look like it was that much until I saw it on camera. And I feel like I need to break that up some. But I'm going to do I'm gonna Milky Way this edge up here. There's a little bit of raw area. Now, every time you add resin, it's going to make everything you have down disperse because your resin's still fluid and it's, it's just gonna kind of part the waters wherever you add more product, which is all right as long as you're prepared for that. It's gonna change your look slightly. So I'm going to incorporate some of these dribbles that have come down. I kind of like that step down layered look. It looks very different. Um, looks very different here than it does on camera. But I need to incorporate this gray. Maybe I'll do, uh, I don't want, I don't want to mess up what I already have, but I have to use this gray. thinking about doing a row up here to kind of part the white. We'll see how it looks. If I do just a skinny little line. With a hair, I'm sure it's mine. It's too long to be a bowie hair. It's really tough working with reds because of it wanting to make such um, n not that desired um, secondary color. So for example, if you do red and white, you're gonna look like a candy cane or you're gonna make pink. If you do red and green for like any kind of reason, if those are your favorite colors, you're, there's no way around it looking Christmassy. And if they mix together, they're going to make an atrocious secondary color. So it's a tough one. Ooh, I like how that subtle ring looks. Okay, 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 okay. Meow, this is getting a little bit crazy. So I'm wondering if I need to do something with that. I also feel like I need to put a floating silver in this as well. 
but we'll get there in a second. I feel like I need to do a little bit of a white line. Mm, I don't know if I like that. We may have to just meld that in a bit. A lot of times if you don't like something, just meld it in, it'd be fine. I think I need a floating color. So I'm gonna grab some silver really quick. Oh, found it. Hey, big girl. All right. This is floating silver. It's essentially spray paint that is not in an aerosol can. It is in just a tin. If you want to try it for, I think it's $5 on my website. It is called floating silver. And I have it in the back of a paper Dixie cup because I'm going to let the propellant or what keeps it liquid soak out into the cup. I'm not putting it in the inside of the cup because Dixie cups are usually wax lined and it's not going to allow for um, any of the propellant to soak out because it's wax lined. That's it's kind of, you're putting liquid in it. They don't want it to just soak the cup. So they line it with, with wax. So I don't know if you guys can see without me completely toppling this over that light tinge around this rim on the top. That is the propellant soaking out. And I shake it and it cracks a little bit right here, there. That's the propellant as well. And so I'm just, see where it looks darker? or just not shiny. That's all propellant. Ugh, I just splashed. And so I need that, I need all of, or a lot of that to, to soak out. And so I'm just letting it soak into the cup. I'm gonna do just a roadside test to see how far it blooms. Oh, the reason why I let the propellant soak out is because that's what keeps it liquid. And so I want to have more control over it. So I soak the propellant out. If I were to just put it on now in the state that it is, it's going to grow because of the propellant. It's gonna bloom and it can only do that so much before it dries and then it's gonna crack. Right now I'm just popping bubbles. When you use a floating color like this, it needs to be kind of in the last bit that you add. And I don't want to add too much heat because that's just going to thin my resin and it's going to make things flow even more. And we don't want that. We want it to stay where it is. Meow. We're going to hope this has, no, it's still pretty. So I'm going to get your opinion on something else while I can, if you don't mind coming down here with me for a moment. So when I had to kind of get rid of that white that I added, it, I kind of just swiped it around to kind of bury it. And I'm kind of digging that look between the colors. This is getting a little bit out of hand. 
Um, I liked it a lot better when it was just subtle. So I feel like I need to swipe. I feel like I need to swipe this out, this row, not the not the gradient, but this level. And I feel like I need to do the same here. But I want y'all's opinion on that before I do it because you guys always give me the best advice. Add glass to the gray later. Could do that. Okay. So I was going to go ahead and add the silver, but I'm going to see what it looks like if I just swipe part of this now. So when you do resin art, there's always this know when to quit moment where it's like I'm not that upset with how it looks and if I do something to it and it looks worse then what like what then what do I do uh, thank you Lois thank you so much and so this is that moment where it's would it look better if I do this or would it look worse and so I'm going to just do like a little partial swipe over here just to see if we like it. And if we don't, we'll just have to fix just a little bit. We're not committing to, you know, the whole piece having to be doctored, you know. Whenever I teach my uh, art classes, I tell people, don't freak out if something isn't how you envisioned it or you don't like something, just take deep breath and let's, let's work on how we can fix it. And so sometimes I have to tell myself that in my head, like, okay, that's not what you were going for, but don't freak out. Everything is fixable. And I think that's probably a good motto for just life. Like, don't freak out. Whatever it is, is fixable. I've had to tell myself a lot lately, don't freak out. Everything is fixable. Am I the only one that has to, you know, like self-soothe and assure myself that, okay, this isn't how... You thought it would be, but that's fine. Don't stress. Let's just evaluate and step out smartly. And I think I like what this is doing now. I'm going to just continue that around just to kind of tie in the drips so it looks like it's part of a piece not well it happened and now I just have to deal with it even though that is exactly what's going on it happened now I have to deal with it but I want it to look like it's a choice in art no matter what goes on it's a choice if you have a potential buyer and they have questions on something find a word around it so that it sounds like totally meant to do that for sure meant to do that and I think that may be just a life motto in general well for me anyways thank you so much Krish now I like how that evolved I was going to do the same up here, but I think I'm okay with most of how it's flowing. I just don't want these little mushroom cloud looks that didn't quite flow all the way down. And so I'm just going to swipe my way around that. This one isn't 
being quite as awesome as I wanted it to be. So now, happy accidents are totally great. So there's still a lot of propellant in here, but it's a lot less. But it's at the point now where we can add it to the piece and it not be um, it's not going to bloom out too intensely. This is a floating silver, which I fully love to work with floating anything. Oh. Tiffany wants a red geode, so I'm trying to. So I'm just pulling this silver through the piece. I haven't mixed any resin into it. At all. You guys probably can't even see what the floating looks like from here. I had to grab the that one time, so be careful. I was gonna just wipe it off after I was done with the live. You guys, my husband just came home. Most of you know him, but if you don't, his name's Jeff and he is amazing and talented and awesome. And the biggest sweetheart. So I'm going to see what it looks like running down these drips here. One of the cool things about this floating pigment is that you can put it down at an angle like this and it'll stay at said angle. So a lot of times when we do countertops and we have a vertical area that we have to address, we will just add that area in with the floating colors. Um, I think I'm going to add the silver to this area, the geode-esque areas. I'm just using a pipette to do that, but you can just use a stick as well. So when they move that stuff around, or is that already? Oh, I didn't like glue it down or anything. Is that what the question was? Yeah, I didn't glue it down. Um, does it look metallic on camera? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to bring this up into that part. Yeah, you can see the reflection. It's almost like chrome, isn't it? I'm going to do just this last bit of silver that I have in here. Well, I thought I was. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to have to go for it. And then just make it look like it's supposed to be there. I think I feel like I need to add more of my this in areas that kind of got um, taken over. So you can see right here, it's kind of like red where the resin went over. 
And I'm going to take this druzy that we made that I have left over and just patch that work right up. Awesome. And I have some patching to do down here. And then we're going to add the glitter glass, which is my favorite. And it adds all of the amazing sparkle that we love to see in geoids or geodes. Huh? It's a lot of stuff coming through on business parts or business, business facing you. Okay, I'll check it when we're done. Stamp's probably already all over it though. I'm just making the edges make sense. I want to trail off in these areas. There, that's more like it. And now we can add our sparkle razzmatazz pizzazz, AKA glitter glass. So this is glitter glass. It is actual glass, but it sparkles like glitter, but it's not like abrasive and tacky like glitter can be. So, we're just gonna sprinkle that over top like it's cheese and we're making some nachos. Be careful when you use this stuff. You can also get it on my website, artistaldeath.com. But uh, yeah, be careful because it is glass and it will cut you. It won't ask any questions. Doesn't care how long you've been working with it. This stuff is sharp. Today? Rain, it's no fun. All right, I think I'm done with this first layer. I know that it is quite crazy looking, but it is in the appropriate colors. So I would love to know what you guys think. Sorry, I'm just getting all the resin off of my tripod. So let me take you guys down and show you up close the beauty Ugh, I'm trying to clean off my, there we go. Sparkleflex, that is because of the glitter glass. I do have it in different colors, but. I think it looks best. in the clear because you can just put it over everything and it works love the look of this right here then i added the silver on this wall definitely 100 percent not what i thought this piece would end up looking like however i still like it and I hope uh, my client does too. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Like it, love it, hate it, indifferent. Let me know. I'm always interested in seeing what you guys think. Have you ever used glitter glass before? Have you ever done the druzy deal like this before? I want to know. Uh, that is a piece I'm working on 
I think this one is almost finished from yesterday's live. And so, yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And do you have any questions before I leave you guys? Did you put everything, anything over the Epsom salt mixture? I didn't because I mixed in the resin and I think it'll be enough to hold it, everything down. Resin scares you. Uh, it can be very intimidating, thousand percent for sure. This may be like some of my favorite bits, this like trail down. Boop, boop, boop. Um, resin can definitely be intimidating, but I think that if you take your time and have proper materials, take proper precautions for your own health status, then it's a beautiful, glorious medium to work with. So you guys, I have to go, but I hope you enjoyed this feed. Let me know what you think down in the description box below this video. And I'll see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central. If you want to know what colors I use, they were Carmine from Just Resin, Red Plum from Resin Art, Milky Way or Shooting Star. You can also use Abalone from Resin Art. Um, floating Liquid Silver. Um, Onyx from Color Passion. Pearl from Pearl Shimmer from Color Passion. Glitter Glass. Extra large geode, all of all of which can be found on my website, including our awesome, amazing, handy dandy stir sticks. You just wipe them off and reuse them. They're great because you reuse them forever and not just have one use popsicle sticks. And popsicle sticks are porous, therefore, it's not going to do that much damage, but it'll mix bubbles into your resin if you're looking for a full bubble free mix. Don't use popsicle sticks. <gasps> that rhymes. Anyways, I hope you all have an amazing day. Uh, support small businesses like mine and order from artistildeath.com. I believe Claire put everything I used in the comment box. And I will see you guys tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central. Till then, be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. I don't know where he is. But always remember that we do the test so you don't have to. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. You say bye, Bubba? Yeah. He said bye, my precious boy. Bye, y'all.